film begins with chocolatier Willy Wonka, Timothy Chalamet, arriving in a new city by ship, eager to sell his creations at the gallery's gourmet, a hat full of dreams. As he explores the city, he ends up losing most of his money, leaving him penniless and homeless. Willie is discovered by a large man named Mr. Bleacher, Tom Davis, who offers him a place to stay. Bleacher takes Willie to his home, which he shares with Mrs. Scrubbit, Olivia Coleman. They seem hospitable, offering Willie gin and a room, but as Willie signs their contract, a young girl named Noodle, Kala Lane, quietly advises him to read the fine print. He ignores her warning. The next day, Willie introduces himself to the townspeople and showcases his unique chocolate creations. You've never had chocolate like this, called hover chocks, made with a special flying bug. This attracts the attention of three local chocolatiers, Arthur Slugworth, Patterson Joseph, Ficklegruber, Matthew Bainton, and Prod Nose, Matt Lucas. They taste the hover chocks and, despite clearly liking it, claim it's the worst chocolate they've ever had. The bug's effect causes them to float, and Willie begins to sell his chocolate to the crowd. However, the chief of police, Keegan Michael Key, and Officer Affable, Cobna Hold Brooksmith, confiscate his chocolate, though Affable discreetly gives Willie a sovereign to pay for his room. Returning to Bleacher and Scrub It, Willie is hit with a series of ridiculous charges and forced to work for them indefinitely to pay off his debt. He is thrown down a laundry chute where he meets other victims of Scrub It and Bleacher's scheme, Scrub Scrub, former accountant Abacus Crunch, Jim Carter, plumber Piper Benz, Natasha Rothwell, telephone operator Lottie Bell, Rocky Thakrar, and failed comedian Larry Chucklesworth, Rich Fulcher. Noodle has the highest debt racked up and must work the longest. In his room, Willie learns that Noodle has never tried chocolate before. After telling her how his mother, Sally Hawkins, taught him how to make chocolate and inspired his creativity, he uses his chocolate-making mechanism utilizing special ingredients, such as liquid sunlight, and creates a special chocolate with a lightning bolt on it. Noodle tries it and admits she likes it, but doesn't think she will get to try any again. Willie then begins to hatch an idea for making more chocolate, promising Noodle a lifetime supply. The chief is seen entering a church and going underground through the corrupt Father Julius, Rowan Atkinson. He meets with Slugworth, Ficklegruber, and Prodnos who are unofficially called the Chocolate Cartel. They consider Willie to be a threat since they know his chocolate is delicious, and with him selling it for cheap, they know their business is in danger. The three villains proceed to bribe the chief with a huge amount of chocolate, Sweet Tooth. In exchange for dealing with Willie, even if it involves lethal means, Willie and Noodle proceed to create a diversion by tricking Scrubbit into thinking Bleacher is some kind of wealthy aristocrat while also tricking Bleacher into thinking Scrubbit secretly likes him. Willie also creates a machine using their dog tittles to do the laundry faster and more efficiently, allowing the other workers to relax. Noodle then accompanies Willie to the zoo, since he said he needs giraffe milk for his next creation. They distract a guard using a truffle that essentially makes him drunk, and Willie goes off to find the giraffe. They succeed, and he uses special mints to feed the giraffe, named Abigail, who then allows Willie to milk her. Noodle then shows Willie a ring she wears around her neck that appears to have the letter in, which is how Scrubbit came to call Noodle by her name. She talks about her dream of having a real home and family, for a moment, and Willie promises to help her find that. When the two return home, Willie explains to the other workers what he is doing. Abacus warns him that the chocolate cartel not only control the chocolate sales in town, but they also keep documents of their shady dealings, which involve diluting and watering down their chocolate, keeping the excess stored in a vault underground beneath the church, guarded by Father Julius and hundred of chocoholic monks. Despite knowing the risks, the others agree to help Willie sell his chocolate without interference. Willie starts by using his giraffe milk macaroons to give to a man with a lack of confidence to sweep his girlfriend off her feet. He then sells other delicious products, You've never had chocolate like this, reprise, and escapes from the chief by going down storm drains. The chief catches onto the scheme and begins to order men to guard the storm drains, while also dealing with his increasing weight gained from all the chocolate he has been consuming. At night, Willie sets up a trap for a little orange man that has been stealing his chocolates. The trap works, and Willie finds himself meeting an Oompa Loompa named Lofty, Hugh Grant. He explains, Oompa Loompa, 
that Willie stole the cocoa beans from Lumpeland and ruined his life. So he needs to get back sufficient payment in chocolate so he can return home. Lofty tricks Willie by whacking him with a frying pan and stealing his chocolate. The chocolate cartel spies on Willie and sees that Noodle is involved. They appear to recognize her and view her involvement as a problem as well. Slugworth then goes to scrub it and bleach her for a sinister scheme. Noodle gets Willie the keys to the shop in the town square so that he can open up his shop and sell his creations. He eventually opens it to the public, showcasing a variety of beautiful confectionaries like cotton candy clouds, edible flowers, and chocolate trees, a world of your own. The crowd loves everything until they start to find themselves growing hair and having them change colors at an alarming rate. Willie realizes the chocolate has been poisoned with an ingredient called Yeti Sweat and tries to warn everyone. The people turn on Willie and begin to trash his shop, ending with the place catching fire after an angry mother cuts down a chandelier. As Willie sadly sits in the ruins of his shop, he is approached by the chocolate cartel with enough money to clear all of their debts with scrub it and bleacher. On the condition that he leaves town and never makes or sells chocolate again, Willie reluctantly agrees and boards a boat out of town. Sorry, Noodle. After a while, Lofty reappears, as he believes Willie's debt to him is unsettled. Willie then notices a mark on his hand when Slugworth shook his hand tightly, as his ring appears similar to the one that Noodle has, indicating that she and Slugworth are related. Realizing she is in danger, Willie decides to head back. When he tries to tell the captain, he finds that the boat is rigged with dynamite by the cartel, but he and Lofty jump ship before the boat explodes. Scrub it allows Abacus, Piper, Lottie, and Larry to go free, but she tells Noodle that Slugworth paid her to keep Noodle there forever, in addition to poisoning the chocolates. Willie joins the other adults in helping to break Noodle free as they plan to break into the chocolate cartel's vault and expose their schemes so that she can be safe. The group gets Abigail out of the zoo as they bring her to the church to frighten Julius and the monks. Willie and Noodle sneak their way underground, only to be found by the cartel and have Slugworth point a gun at them. His relation to Noodle is revealed to be uncle and niece, as she is his brother Zeppi's daughter. He passed away, and her mother asked Slugworth to take care of Noodle while she was sick, but he left her with Scrub It and told her mother that she died so that he could inherit their family's chocolate fortune. The villains then throw Willie and Noodle into their vault in an attempt to drown them in chocolate, but first, Willie gives Slugworth a jar of his chocolate to give to Lofty if he sees him, but the three jerks eat all of it. No.